Today, I'm going to give a, like, a little bit of explanation and a guide on how to make traditional levels. Reason, a lot of people try to make traditional levels, but they suck. And part of that is that traditional levels are very difficult to make because traditional levels are all about freedom and having many different options. Uh, people will generally approach this in a very uh, simplistic way that just ends poorly, like you don't, you're not really in control of the situation. So today I'm going to kind of show you the strategies and like what you have to think about in terms of making a traditional level. So the very first thing I want to focus on is freedom. The whole point of a traditional level is to have different options. It's very different from a Kaizo level. A Kaizo level is like the opposite of a traditional level, where Kaizo, everything, you have to do exactly the way the maker prescribes. And if you don't do it exactly the way the maker prescribes, you die. Traditional level is about giving Mario lots of roots, many different things he could possibly do or choose not to do, and then just letting the player have fun in this little sandbox or this little area that you've made. Okay, and so I'm gonna kind of explain how you do that. So first let's talk about enemy placement. Enemy placement is kind of the most important thing for traditional levels that people get wrong. And it's kind of involved because there, there's a lot that goes into it. So the main way I'd, I'd like to describe this is just focus on the number of options and the kind of options that Mario has when engaging with this enemy. So here we have a mole. And I have here very, very flat terrain, very, very basic, very neutral, like there's nothing here special. So we can just look at what the mole does in isolation. All right, so what are Mario's options? Option one is jump over the mole. And option number two is jump on the mole and continue onward. That is it. Those are the only two real options that Mario has under these conditions. This applies to a lot of enemies, Goombas, Koopas, etc. Like, you actually don't have that many options on flat terrain. And that's why flat terrain is normally like the most, um, is like the least interesting for Mario. Now, let's compare if we spice up the terrain just a little bit. And this isn't gonna, even gonna be like, a huge change in terms of like you'd say oh you know you just added a slope what's so special about that it's like let's see now that i've added this slope what are the different routes that mario has to deal with this mole now we can what we can do here is either wait for the mole to pass the slope or not so if we wait for the mole we can jump on the mole as before and continue or we can wait for the mole and then jump over Alternatively, we now have some new options that were not there before. One route is to go over and wait as the mole passes by and sneak around him from under. Another is to go fast and slide into the mole. Another is to go fast and jump on the mole. Another is to jump onto the slope and then jump over the mole. So just by adding this one slope, I've actually added quite a bit more complexity to how Mario would be interacting with this mole. Now, when evaluating these different routes, you might want to think about, okay, so what makes one route better than another? Because at the end of the day, what we have to do is really like balance the difficulty and the risk and reward of each possible option for Mario. So keep in mind that there's such thing as high ground advantage. And let's say that we have a Goombrat on flat ground. So Mario's a game all about jumping. So if Mario wants to, let's say, go onto the Goombrat or like deal with this Goombrat, and now the Goombrat has high ground, the higher the Goombrat is, the harder it is for Mario to clear this Goombrat. Because there comes a point where Mario's, the distance between the peak of Mario's jump arc just becomes less tolerant, like it's a smaller gap to either clear the Goombrat or get over it. So if we were to keep going, now this Goombrat is even harder than before, and now even harder than that. At this point, Mario can no longer jump over the Goombrat in one shot. Now Mario actually has to like time. We've restricted the number of options. If he doesn't time the jump with the Goombrat being on a certain spot of the platform, then he'll get hit because he can't clear it. So now this Goombrat's positioning right now is very, very difficult for Mario to deal with, relatively speaking. Now, high ground advantage goes the other way around as well. So let's say that we have the Goombrat on low ground. Now Mario's jump arc gives him a lot of time to orient himself in order to deal with the Goombrat and land wherever he wants to. 
So now Mario is advantaged in this situation. Whereas when the Goomba is above, it has a high ground advantage, and when Mario's higher, he also has high ground advantage. That's a general trend in Mario just because it's a game about platforming and a very common thing in platformers in general. So now we can use that when we think about the mole. So when Mario deals with this mole, how can we potentially affect the difficulty of these different options? Well, let's say that we have the exact same situation with this mole, with this slope, and let's even like exaggerate a little bit more by going one block higher. So now what options do we have? Right now we can wait for the mole and then deal with it on neutral footing. Normally people want to go fast, right? Waiting is always like a time cost. And so that is the disadvantage of waiting and then dealing with it on neutral ground. Alternatively, what you can do is have Mario go up to the high ground and then deal with it neutrally. Now that the, the mole and, the, and Mario have equal footing, and now it's easier for Mario to deal with it, however he has to go fast in order to have time in order to make this maneuver. So there's a little bit more difficulty here for Mario to deal with this mole if he goes through, through this. However, he can nullify the high ground advantage and then deal with the mole. The other route is to go directly while the mole is in transit, smack the mole while it's en route. And as you can see there, that is way tighter. Like this maneuver is much, much more difficult because the mole has a large high ground advantage over Mario. And lastly, we have the slope, which is mostly just Mario has to go fast. He can only get enough slope if he goes much, much faster. And we can tune how the different options are relative to, like, like influence what option Mario might want to go for by making certain routes easier or harder than others. So let's say that I move this mole farther and farther away. So now there's more and more time to get up here and then deal with the deal with the mole on an equal footing. This change of moving the mole from over here to over there basically advantages all the routes where Mario tries to get up here fast. And it disadvantages the route where we kind of wait for the mole for a much longer, much longer time. If we do the opposite instead, and we move the mole instead of being over here, we move it up closer to the slope, we now make some of these other routes much more difficult. The, we've positioned the enemy such that the routes of attack from up here are now more difficult than before. This is the main thought process that you need to have when placing enemies in a traditional style level. That's the whole point of making a traditional level. It's all about giving Mario lots of options and then balancing how easy or hard they are. And this is like a really simple situation. Like this is literally just a mole on a slope. These can get much more complicated if you have much fancier patterns. So on that topic, let's talk about blocks. All right, so here's like the main block pattern that people have memorized from 1-1. And rather than just say, well, let's copy paste this, like let's think about what this is doing and why this matters at all. Let's change those from brick blocks, which are staple in the Mario franchise for a reason, to ground blocks. So now we just don't have the same thing going on with the brick blocks. Now, consider how Mario can attack this Goomba. On flat ground, we have a couple of routes. We have Mario can run over this set of blocks and just totally bypass the Goomba. Alternatively, we can wait, again, waiting, not preferred, wait for the Goomba to come by and then hit him when we have no low ceiling, or go over him when there's no low ceiling, or under the low ceiling, let's just move this over here, to make that more pronounced. While there is a low ceiling, deal with the Goomba. Dealing with the Goomba in a more cramped space is more difficult, and so we now have a couple of different options for how Mario might want to clear this general set. With this pattern that is normally made of brick blocks and question mark blocks, what do we normally have? Well, we have a very obvious bypass route. Like, there's no reason at all for Mario to ever go this low route. This route is just easier, for the most part and it's kind of like a brain dead option. Like there's not really, like, there's nothing in it for me to deal with this Goomba. Let's spice this up just a little bit. Let's say that we now add an enemy here as an intercept, right? So now we have two options. Again, we can go the high route or the low route. And then within each, we can either attack the Goomba, go around it, deal, deal with it with a high ceiling, etc. By adding the upper Goomba, the top route is no longer a free bypass route and the setup in general is much better balanced. But now let's see what is the impact of bringing in brick blocks. Okay, so what do we have now differently? 
Mario can still go the low route or the high route. However, now what he can do is attack the Goomba, the Goombrat that is above him, the Goombrat that has the high ground advantage, and attack it with the Brick Blocks. Brick Blocks primarily serve to invert high ground advantage. So whenever an enemy is above Mario, normally it has the advantage, but with the Brick Blocks, that lets you change it. And that's a fundamental difference between ground and just Brick Blocks, and why you might want to choose one versus the other. But still, we don't really have a main reason why you might want to go for the low root versus the high root. Okay, so now, let's say that instead of adding a Goombrat above, instead we just put a power-up. We no longer have, a, have anything stopping Mario from going up above. Like before, this is kind of like a just skip the obstacle route. However, now, if Mario does this, he skips the question mark block that contains a power-up. Right? And that is a very, like, big choice, at least relatively speaking, for Mario to make. Do I want to fight the Goomba under the low ceiling, or do I want to just skip everything entirely? Which is probably both faster and safer. All right? And this is the kind of risk-reward that you want in a traditional level. You want to put rewards in places that reward Mario for doing things that are difficult, or for doing things that kind of put him in more danger, etc. So there's a reason to go here, because without this power-up, there's actually no reason to go here at all. And this is the kind of thought process that needs to happen when you're placing enemies in a traditional style level. Here, this should give you a, a little bit of an idea of why we might want to choose brick blocks versus ground blocks, and when to put power-ups to make interesting gameplay. And this brings me to another major, con, very common mistake that people do when making traditional levels. I will see this block pattern copied from 1-1, one, one, block for block, so frequently. Apparently this is the only block pattern that people know from traditional style levels. And this is like, this is just... Let's say we have no enemies here. You see that there's basically no... There's nothing stopping me from just checking all of these. If anything, this is just kind of like a tedious task, right? There's nothing, there's no gameplay here. All right, and this comes to, this brings me to one of the biggest blunders that people do in traditional style levels, which is just give away power-ups for absolutely free. If you're gonna do that, at that point, please just don't waste my time, okay? At this stage, this set of brick blocks is exactly the same as if I just used this spike ball to automatically give Mario the power-up. If anything, this setup is much better because this one doesn't waste my fucking time, all right? This doesn't do anything in terms of gameplay. There's not really, like, any joy that comes with interacting with this, right? Even in 1-1, the way that this block pattern is used is in combination with enemies. And the reason that it normally appears so frequently, or patterns like this appear so frequently in Mario games, is because there are enemies nearby which give you reasons to go around. The only time you'll ever really see free power-ups in Nintendo titles, it's like, it's very, very rare. Like, you start seeing that sometime in New Soup, and that's partially because it was kind of designed around multiplayer. And that's because in multiplayer, when you have four players going around, it's very, very messy, and you need a lot of space in order to actually access the power-ups without having everyone get in each other's way. That's a totally different story, though. Normally, at traditional levels, when we're making levels in Mario Maker, it's going to be for single-player purpose. If you're not doing this with like a multiplayer mentality and that's kind of like a, a more advanced topic, just don't use pointless wastes of my time to dole out power-ups. Just like skip the middleman if you're going to do that, all right? And on that topic, use those power-ups, use them as bait to get the player to go into places that are interesting that they would normally just totally skip. I remember I had one traditional level that came to me that was a coin collecting level where you have to collect all the coins in a huge level, tons of coins everywhere. Super tedious. And I asked, why'd you do this? And the guy said, well, it's because people just keep skipping right past the whole level and they just keep going on. It's like that in a traditional style level, that means you done, you done goofed. Like that is, that's not good. It means part of the level is not designed to bait Mario to naturally want to go places that are interesting to play with. One last major part of enemy placement is intercepts. All right, so let's say that we have this this gap. Mario's just gonna, like the plan for the level is Mario just jumps over this gap, right? 
nothing, nothing complicated. And so one thing that you, one frequent concept behind how you might want to place enemies in a level is as intercepts to get in Mario's way to force him to traverse the level not completely unimpeded so he has to like think as he moves across the level and react to the game state as it changes. So one example of an enemy here that might function as an intercept would be a red Koopa red winged Koopa placed a bit better. And so now Mario can't just like walk through I like, can't just jump through completely like ignoring the Koopa because if he does he'll just run into it and die. So now he has to think about how he's going to time his jump in order to get across or to jump on the Koopa to jump on the Koopa and cross the gap. Alternatively there are other intercepts that we can use. Even with just the same red Koopa we can have a Koopa on the other side. So this alternative red Koopa what does this red Koopa do differently? Well, it forces Mario to think about when he's going to land on this platform, because if he lands on this platform at the wrong time, he dies. So now he has to either time in the Koopa cycle to get across safely and then deal with the Koopa once he's on equal footing, jump over it or jump on it, whatever. Or go here so that it's a smaller horizontal gap. This allows Mario to time it much more carefully, but now he has low ground. And then he can deal with the Koopa as he desires. Next main topic is going to be more on blocks. So I discussed a little bit earlier about how blocks invert high ground advantage. And so a lot of the times there's like a lot of very common setups that people use that are, I feel like sometimes they're just copy pasting from, from Nintendo games or they'll do this. Copy that straight up, straight from SMB1 from like 3-1. And so, brick blocks are useful. Why, do, why are brick blocks in this situation? Well, as we said before, it allows Mario to attack the Hammer Bros from below. It makes them vulnerable even if he has the low ground disadvantage. And also gives many alternate routes, so as the Hammer Bros jump up or down, Mario can react to the state of where the Hammer Bros are to avoid them or place himself more carefully. All right. And while this is a stock asset, or while this is a very stock setup, you don't have to steal from the main Nintendo games. You have to, you don't have to, please don't copy paste from SMB1, alright? Like, we don't have to do that, alright? Think about what it is we're doing. Think, think about how you're placing enemies. So like, let's take something like a little bit more customized, right? And what sort of platforms we have. So let's say that instead of Hammer Bro, it's a little about pokies. Right here, not really decorating, just gameplay wise, what's going on? Right now, I've changed the brick blocks to a semi solid on top. And now we have an easy route for Mario to go underneath. Okay, so let's say that we're making a real traditional level. What do you see immediately wrong with here? R immediately wrong with this? The obvious route is you can just skip everything, right? You just run right under, and that is that's not bueno, right? So, what are we gonna do? Well, we have to add something to intercept Mario's path, something that will make Mario either not want to go here or close this off. So one way that we can make this more interesting is by closing this off. We, have put, we have could have put an enemy, we can change terrain, etc. Here's one option. We just don't let him go under, but or don't let him go through from the under route. But now he can deal with the pokey from under. And now why might Mario want to do this? Well, if Mario goes out of his way to go under the pokey and then strategically aim at it, now he can cr cross through here safely. That is one option. Option number two is land on the middle platform. Land on the middle platform and then use that to jump over the pokey. What other things could we potentially do here? If we want to tune, if Mario wants to jump over the pokey versus like attack it from below. Well, again, high ground. Everything that's higher is always going to be harder for Mario to deal with. So if we move that semi-solid up higher, now Mario has a much harder time clearing this pokey. Or we move the semi-solid lower, and the pokey is higher, so now when Mario's up here, he has a bigger hurdle to get over. And by doing these different things, by looking at what are the options, sealing them off, and kind of putting bait where we want, 
we can tune how the traditional level is going to play. Another thing that can be very helpful is using enemies that do interact with and change the terrain. You see a lot of that in SMB3 where Nintendo introduced the concept of grabbing enemies. So let's say we have this Koopa. Besides jump over the Koopa, we can jump on the Koopa, which are the two main base options. We can jump on the Koopa and then grab a shell. And grabbing the Koopa, like normally stomping on the Koopa, which is one tile wide, is going to be a more difficult maneuver than just jumping over it, just because there's so much more space to just clear it like a hurdle. But the reward for that is the shell that you can now grab. And what does that do? It means that now we can use the shell in different ways. Right now, we can use the shell to hit that pokey. But is this a good setup? Is this a good setup for a Koopa shell? I'm gonna say no, because if we do that, we can't really attack the pokey well unless we do it from, like if we attack it in the middle, then we still have this hurdle that we can't really clear without going over. So that route isn't really any different. And if we use the Koopa shell to aim for the head of the pokey to one shot it, then we basically just did the same thing anyway. We basically, we just jumped around the pokey the same way we would have if the Koopa weren't there. So in this situation, the Koopa has not actually added anything new to our ability to go through this section, right? Now we can change how that plays. Now I've changed some of this terrain over here to brick blocks. Now we have an extra route here where Mario can throw the Koopa shell at the wall to go under. And what does this do? When the Koopa shell, the way I've arranged it, now it bounces back and is a hazard that Mario has to deal with. He can deal with it at his own pace, but now he has to dodge it. But if he does that, stomp the Koopa, throw the shell, and then dodge the shell, now it can pass through under unimpeded. Really complicated. So let's say that we've now changed that. Instead of having it be a brick block that breaks immediately, now it's a question mark block, which gives you a power up. Gives you a similar situation, but now Mario has to race after the power up after it's collected. Now this can, now he has to race around the pokey to go grab the power up. These are all things to think about when making a traditional style level. Now there's a couple of different strategies or extra restrictions that you might want to think about when making a traditional level that's more accessible. The most, one of the most common pieces of kind of misinformation on traditional level design is to build your traditional level, if you want it to be accessible, build it so that you can beat it without holding the run button. So usually it means gaps have to be smaller, etc. And I understand like the meaning behind it that people say what they really mean is you should nerf, you should make it so that you can beat the level even if Mario is nerfed to make it more accessible. And while that, it makes sense. A lot of people take that very literally to mean you should be able to beat the level without holding run, which is not correct. Because the accessibility of a level depends a lot more on the skills that you're acquiring of the player. So let's say that just as a quick example, in terms of accessibility, I have this hurdle in a traditional style level you need to wall jump up up this. And if you don't wall jump up, you cannot clear this hurdle. All right? This doesn't, like, I'm not holding run here. I'm just, I'm just wall jumping normally. I can guarantee you that if you give this to like a, like a more casual audience, that is gonna induce so much suffering. This is gonna end horrendously. And I'm not holding run. So what's happening here? It's because that when you're building for when you're building a level, you have to think a lot about your target audience. What skills do they have? What, what are they expecting? What might they know? What might they not know? And wall jumping for is one classic example of something that newer players are really, really bad at. And I've even had discussions where people are like, how can people not know how to wall jump? It's so simple, it's so intuitive. It's like, you give levels to, give, give a level that requires wall jumping to someone who is new, you're gonna see pain. I can guarantee you of that. I have seen it so many times before. Another really common example of a skill that people might not have when playing a traditional style level is forcing someone to jump over a large gap. Where you just have to jump over this Koopa. Let's see if I can tune this jump quickly to work without holding run. You see? I cleared this 
No problems without holding run. Snoop, get over here. I want you to get from the left side, like that bit of ground, to the other bit of ground. Go get him, champ. Press minus to, to start. Uh oh. Keep keep trying. Just keep trying. There we go. You cleared that by running and jumping. I did that without holding run at all. All right, go for it, Snoop. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to illustrate a point here. But do do try. Don't please don't don't job. <laughs> he got you. Okay, one last try. One last try. And I'll explain what's going wrong here. All right. So hopefully that, that kind of explains to you what's going wrong here. So I'm not holding run. To, I, I didn't beat this, this section without holding run and without twirling. All right. I could all actually probably just like twirl over. Run, jump, twirl. We have options here. But why is this not working for Snoop? That's because she doesn't know that you can hold jump to ascend higher. This is a big deal. All right, whenever you have like a mandatory, like you have to bounce on an enemy to clear an obstacle in a, in a traditional style level, that will almost always end kind of like this, which is uh, you'll immediately gate your audience just because it's like, a lot of people just won't know that you can ascend more. It's just very important to think about what skills your audience might have or might not have. At the end of the day, when you're making a traditional style level, you need to give many options, many routes for how someone might want to or might be able to go through the level so that they can beat it with very different skill sets, especially if you're trying to make it accessible. This concludes part one of our traditional style level guide where I talk mostly about the fundamentals. So mostly with very basic setups to teach you like the main thought process behind how you might look at the different options, different movement options in traditional style level and then balance them in terms of risk, reward and difficulty. Stay tuned for part two, where I will focus on looking at actual Nintendo games, just taking a couple of selected examples to see how different design principles are used in those and how that can influence our traditional style level design. See ya.